Are you the type of driver who prefers the higher dollar orders going further? Or would you rather see several lower paying orders staying closer? Regardless of your preference, you're not wrong. They both have their pros and cons, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about just that. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Trice Fast for the Rideshare Guy. And in this video, we're gonna talk about if there's any strategy at all involved in when you choose to accept higher mileage trips or quicker turnaround orders. Before we get too far into the video, I'd like to take a moment to talk about Solo. If you struggle with inconsistent earnings, this is absolutely a must have app for you. Check out the link in the description, enjoy more consistent earnings, and you'd be helping support the channel in the process. Let's start with when it's wise to be looking for shorter trips versus long. During busier times, when you know you're probably gonna have several orders back to back, in my opinion, this is typically the time to favor the quick turnaround trips. Let's talk about why. Uber Eats doesn't have any goofy ass programs that are based on your acceptance rate that prevent you from driving, so you can cherry pick whenever you want. Bam, shots fired. Since we're talking about peak times, this is the time to look for those offers that are going short distances paying eight, nine, and $10 per order. These add up quickly. Just be careful that you're not accepting orders from restaurants that are known to be notoriously slow. Use the Uber Eats customer app to find areas in your market that have a high congestion of restaurants, but that also have residential neighborhoods nearby. Let me ask you this, what's gonna pay you more, fast food joints or sit down restaurants? Probably the latter, so definitely keep that in mind when you're choosing how to position yourself. Due to the high concentration of fancy ass restaurants in close proximity to neighborhoods where I wait, I frequently achieve between three, four, and five dollars per mile on a regular basis. Because my waiting place is near several neighborhoods, this tends to keep my delivery radius pretty small. I typically tend to go less than two miles per order. In fact, I usually stay so close to my waiting place that I'll frequently get offers on different apps while I'm in the middle of a delivery. This is great because I'm typically back quick enough to accept them without being late, and it keeps my wait times to a minimum. Now, to clarify, I'm not saying that if I get a higher mileage order that's paying well during peak times that I won't take it. I absolutely will, assuming the added pay justifies me doing the order. That's just common sense. I like to think that I've got my short distance strategy pretty dialed in, and while I typically do pretty well with it, it isn't always sunshine and rainbows. Let's talk about some drawbacks. On Uber Eats, we're paid base pay, tips, and mileage. But with a two or three dollar tip, with base pay being at an all time low, that just might not cut it. Let's say the base pay is two dollars and the customer also tipped two dollars. It's only four bucks and I'm definitely not gonna start my car for that. My absolute bare minimum is six dollars. Matter of fact, let me know in the comments what your minimums are. I find myself declining more orders that are going closer as opposed to orders that are going a little further out. This is especially true when they're ordering during lunch and usually only ordering for themselves. This is that all too common scenario where they only tip two or three bucks. Even if they technically did tip 20%, it's technically still not worth my time. Another drawback with shorter mileage trips that I find is frequently during dinner. I find myself waiting even longer at restaurants than I would during lunch. My experience has been that restaurants are usually busier during dinner than lunch, so as a result, I almost always end up waiting longer, which definitely cuts into my profitability. Another con with shorter mileage trips is that you might burn a little more gas, which now that I say it sounds a little janky, but hear me out. When you accept a longer mileage trip, you may frequently find yourself on the highway or the freeway, which isn't necessarily true of short trips where you're taking surface streets and starting and stopping all the time, which definitely destroys your gas mileage, not to mention wear and tear. The final con I want to talk about with shorter trips is they typically pay less than orders that are going out to the sticks. Now, of course, not always, but frequently, customers that do live further out will tend to tip more because they know they're asking more of the driver. Except for this guy. Now let's shift our attention to longer mileage trips. See what I did there? Shift. Depending on your market, you will probably see more higher mileage trips on apps like Uber Eats and Grubhub versus DoorDash. Matter of fact, Grubhub used to be my favorite app by a mile because those longer mileage trips would frequently pay me between $20 and $40 per order. Unfortunately, 
The days of Grubhub actually paying well are largely behind us, and this is partially due to the fact that the stimulus checks have dried up and customers forgot how to tip. So, you have to be careful that you're getting paid enough to justify driving out to the sticks and then back. Think about it for a moment. If the right longer distance trip comes around, you could make just as much with that one, if not more, than you could with two or even three trips staying close. I tend to prefer the longer mileage trips during times that are a little less busy. I like the guarantee that I'll have an order in the car and I won't have to wait around for an unknown period of time waiting to accept the next offer. I can't speak for you and your market, but with me and mine, typically speaking, the longer mileage trips almost always involve a highway or a freeway, which is definitely better for my gas, as well as wear and tear. Now, of course, there are drawbacks as well. One of the biggest, at least for me and my market, is that the orders that are going further are usually going between 8 and 12 miles, which is almost always out in the county somewhere. There's a lot of farmland, but there's not so many restaurants, so I'm almost always driving empty miles back. Again, in my area, it's almost always Uber Eats or Grubhub that send these types of orders, and it's getting harder and harder to achieve at least $2 a mile. So, be exceedingly careful with the mileage on the orders you're accepting. In fact, I strongly encourage that you increase your dollar per mile ratio if you're going to be driving empty miles back. Regardless on if you prefer short trips or longer mileage trips, you're not wrong. Just make sure you have a strategy for when you're taking them. If there's one thing you take away from the video, I hope it's this. Do not ignore things like time of day, day of the week, and market conditions. You should be accepting your offers based off of those things. I encourage you to develop a strategy for yourself, and this may take some trial and error, so be sure to utilize the customer app to find the best place to position yourself. That way, you'll have the greatest chance of success. Remember, if you haven't checked out Solo yet, the link's in the description. Give it a chance, you'll be glad you did. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. You can catch my videos here every Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video next where I tell you why I don't like DoorDash but continue to take orders on the platform. I'm Zach Dreisfast for the Rideshare Guy. Take care.